Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are. Thank you for joining us for our presentation uh, today as we cover Toll NQX Talks Heavy Vehicle Safety. Our presenter today is Greg Smith and I'll talk a little bit more about Greg later on. This webinar is the first of a series of webinars by the National Road Safety Partnership Program, which is of course supported by Safe Work Australia. My name is Angela Juhas and I'll be your webinar moderator today. Before I introduce Greg to you, I'll introduce uh, Jerome Carslick, who is the manager of the NRSPP, uh, just to give a bit of an introduction on it. Thank you, Angela. Um, the NRSVP has been an uh, initiative that's been created over the last three years. It sort of came out of the National Transport Commission. Uh, following extensive consultation, we had a range of organisations which you can sort of see up on your screen now, uh, one of them including TOL, all stepped up and basically helped provide the framework and develop the, uh, the structure of the program to move forward. The real goal of the program is to really help drive road safety uh, in businesses and organisations, workplaces of all sizes. Uh, but at the same time to increase productivity, efficiency and uh, environmental measures at the same time. So I uh, would like to know that ARV sort of was selected over the last uh, few sort of months by the steering committee uh, to manage the program, to take it forward. And uh, probably one of the key things to make a point here is all the sort of program members are part of it, mainly because they sort of recognise that road safety isn't, shouldn't be a competitive advantage, but rather a shared advantage. Because if some issue happens in their sector, the whole industry is vilified in the view of the public, so thank you very much. Too right, Jerome. Thank you for that introduction. Now, without any further comment from me, the, the man of the moment that everyone's keen to hear from is, of course, Greg Smith, who is the General Manager over at Toll NQX. Greg has over 30 years' experience in the transport industry, starting out as a truck driver and now managing Toll NQX quite the background you have there, Greg. Greg, could you tell us a little bit more about your journey um, through the transport sector? Certainly, Angela, and thank you for that. Um, I was originally from a small country Victorian town, and um, as such, you, you find yourself driving trucks and heavy vehicles at a young age on farms and things like that. So I started, I entered the, the industry in um, that area. Then uh, it was a natural progression into um, driving and uh, had, had a fair bit of experience uh, on road. And my interest was always in trying to make things better, so I took on management roles. And I've had the good fortune to um, end up with Tolent or be within Tolent QX and um, in the role of general manager. Such an inspirational story for all our young professionals starting out in the industry. And um, I think we're keen to, to learn more about Toll and, and your involvement with things. So I'll hand back over to you. Sure, thank you. Toll and QX is one of the business units inside Toll. We're a national business to business provider, so essentially at the heavy end of um, the road transport business. We've got three core lines of business that are consolidated. So that's a part load service, a straight line and project services and our rail business. We have a network of 32 branches, uh, around 1,900 staff and 2,000 dedicated road services per week. Our road fleet, our line haul fleet, will travel more than 100 million kilometres on the road each year. And that's a big part of the reason why we've, we've had a real safety focus inside our depots, but that's not enough for someone who spends so much time on the road. We need to have a real on-road focus, and that's the path we've gone down. Wow, 100 million kilometres, goodness me. Um, <clears throat> we've taken a bit of an industry leadership uh, role in road safety. We're accredited, of course, with the NHBR, as you can see on the screen, for mass management, maintenance management, basic fatigue and advanced fatigue. We're also members of um, TruckSafe, which is essentially a quality management system specifically designed for the transport industry. And our National Line Hall Manager, John King, was recently awarded the Industry Excellence Award from the QTA for helping make Australia's road freight industry safer. John's been an advocate for uh, roads for on-road safety for all of the 15 years that I've been inside the business, and um, he's been a real driving force inside our business for improvement. The business of NQX, um, you can see on your screen the sort of customers we have. So they're the higher end or the larger end of industry. They've got a um, very clear understanding of um, their responsibilities on the chain of responsibility, but also the fact that we represent them on road and they're very interested in what we're doing on road and how that reflects back on them. 
So our aim is to reach best practice in the industry and that's a reflection for our customers on the way they're engaging with the community. Firstly, we'll talk about um, speed management and to give you a little bit of a context on that, I thought what we would do is just, just give you an example of the um, sort of distances our drivers are travelling. The average Australian travels around 14,000 kilometres per year. The average toll NQX line haul driver is up around 220,000 kilometres per year. So their exposure to um, the hazards of the road is far greater than the average driver. And that's very much worth keeping in mind as we go through this process. The exposure that they have is so great, but the rules they work to are, of course, exactly the same as anybody else. Um, a little bit of a challenge for you, if you like. Um, no need to give you, no need for an answer, of course, but uh, if you think about the drive to work this morning, the way we measure our one speed events is any speed event uh, that exceeds four seconds. So would you have travelled at the speed limit on your way to work this morning for over four seconds? It's an interesting thought. <laughs> That's the way we measure our drivers. The um, document you see in front of you uh, that's the report that I get on a monthly basis. That, that essentially tells me how many events we have, for what period of time and at what speed. And what you'll notice on there is that we've uh, achieved our goal where we have no speed events over 110 kilometres an hour um, in the 10 to 10 plus section. So our overall goal is no speed events at all, but for the size of the fleet we have, um, we're really proud of this um, of this position and it's a constant work in progress. One of the interesting things with this is that what we see is when new drivers join us, we typically see a spike in speed events and when we um, sit with them and spend some time with them and explain to them further what, we, what it is that we want, which is very much explained at the original interview and employment process, when we work with them, we almost always get them to understand what we're looking for and you'll see their speed events drop away. So we not only have it like this, this is a summary that I see, we actually have it by driver as well. Well, those results are certainly something to be proud of, Greg. Thank you. Now, I've covered most of this, I think, but essentially you can see what's on the screen. So over 70% of the events were between 104 and 106 and for under 10 seconds. The Speed beats over 10 seconds, so that's reached zero, so we're very, very happy with that. But the managing speed has been a journey. We're proud of the point we've reached, especially considering that each driver is travelling 18,000 kilometres per month. It's, uh, it's a big ask, but the driver's doing a wonderful job. Incident prevention. So the next part of our presentation is around one of the initiatives we've uh, been working on for a number of years now, which is in-vehicle cameras. We began working with the in-vehicle cameras or trying to source cameras for, for five years ago and it took us two years to be able to find cameras that actually did what it was we wanted but also what the uh, vendors were saying they could do. So we've now got over 140 total NQX prime movers that have fitted with cameras. The camera constantly report, record in a loop and what that means is they just it's a constant recording loop and they record and dump after a period of time, so there's no long-term recording that's kept. Um, the recording that is kept the, is activated by a G-force event, so half, harsh braking, swerving, can even be a pothole or driver activated. The recording provides vision and audio of both the road ahead and in cab. The camera footage includes eight seconds prior and four seconds after activation. The system is monitored by a third-party provider who reviews all events and provides email assessment of their safety observations. The, um, the good thing with the cameras, the drivers uh, have accepted those quite well and a big part of that is the fact that they can actually activate the cameras for us. So if the driver sees an event that's happening on road and is concerned or thinks, geez, we should know what's happening there, he can actually activate that for us and he can come and have a talk to his supervisor when he's returned to depot. Um, with the cameras, all drivers and managers participating in the process work with a code of conduct. This is designed to ensure proper custody and approved distribution of film whilst maintaining a strict recognition of driver privacy. Without that there, I'm sure we would have had a much more difficult time in introducing the technology. The driver acceptance has been very, very high. Uh, most of our drivers accept the camera technology and are very comfortable with it because they see both sides. We've had a number of times where 
the driver has been protected by the vision the camera has been able to provide. And that's been fantastic. Some of the drivers are not comfortable. I guess it's one of those things where not everything suits everybody, um, but it's a part of what we do and it's part of working with us. Um, most of our drivers are actually strong advocates, of, strong advocates of the cameras because they do understand the benefits that they bring. Absolutely, it certainly protects them at the end of the day. Um, so would you mind taking a few questions, uh, Greg? No, happy to do that. All right. Uh, we'll start with, how are the trucks speeding if there are speed limiters? Yeah, it's an interesting question. We get that one quite a bit. <clears throat> the, uh, most of our speed events are actually downhills. The speed limiter, it limits the speed of the vehicle under power, but uh, has no impact on a speed coming down a hill. And there's also a thing where once it gets to speed, it can actually run a little bit faster than, um, than what the speed limit is. That's unusual. It's more down a hill. Right. Oh. Uh, Caroline from Brake asks, <laughs> if drivers are speeding, at what point do you pull up drivers on it and what measures do you have in place for addressing the speeding issue? Uh, we wait until the vehicle exceeds over 104 kilometres an hour and even then it's over a couple of seconds. So the event must be over 104 and over 4 seconds. That's the point where we'll actually have a conversation with the driver and what it's all about is we're, we're really trying to get the drivers to understand what we're trying to achieve and to adopt that themselves. So it's a counselling session, um, not necessarily a disciplinary session. Fair enough. Okay. Question here from Christopher. Uh, Christopher's from Limpox and he asks, Greg, can you tell us about the issues you experienced in installing DriveCam into your fleet? Any advice for other operators? Um, okay. We didn't really get too much uh, opposition to the cameras. We um, we put them into our line hall fruit up at fleet up in North Queensland, and uh, it's fair to say there are a fair number of events up there. We explained the um, opportunity for the operator to um, trigger the camera, and our drivers were fairly keen on that part of it. So there was a little bit of um, trepidation from some of them. There was the concept of, gee, Big Brother is watching, they're going to see everything I'm doing. When we explained that, no, that's not right, there's no kept footage other than the eight seconds before and four seconds after an event, that gave them a real level of comfort. The code of conduct was key also, so that there's a um, understanding of how the information we dealt with from a privacy perspective and that um, opportunity for the operator to record. So we didn't get a lot of pushback. We, we put it into our um, line hall fleets in the north first and then rolled it down through the rest of the country. Um, I think consultation was the big piece, explaining to the drivers what the benefits were to them as well as to the business brought them on board. So the key piece of advice I would give would be to clearly explain to the drivers what it is you're doing and what it is you're trying to um, achieve and that consultation space. Piece. Just taking that a little bit further, uh, Gary of West Farmers Cleaning asks, um, how long did the consultative process take you? Uh, we probably worked through a period of around three or four months. We, we knew we'd been, we'd been looking for them for two years prior to we actually found some that were going to work and we put a few pilot cameras in so the drivers were a part of that pilot process. So they were seeing what was happening and they were aware on the way through. So I guess that would have been over a reasonably long period, three or four months and that, that's to do as much as anything else with the pilot and then the actual implementation. So we had that opportunity to consult over a fair period of time and we just made sure the drivers were involved. And how do drivers react when they see uh, their own footage, it's, their own accident footage? <laughs> well, it's mixed. Um, one of the things that's really interesting is often, more often than not, the driver's memory of the event is quite different to what the footage says. And uh, I'm no psychologist, but what we think that is, is that um, the brain is focused on the issue and driving the vehicle, not on remembering exactly what happened. So the drivers can um, get quite a surprise when they actually see what's happened as opposed to what they thought happened. So it can be quite different. different. On the other side of things, um, just the other week we uh, had a piece of footage of one of our drivers has um, hit a pothole and it's triggered the camera. He's realised it would and so as it's triggered he's gone, whoops. And he, actually, and he actually said, oh, that'll trigger it, and he's given the camera a big smile and wave. So we've showed him that piece and he got quite a laugh out of it. Oh, there are some good news stories then. Well, there's actually a lot of good news stories, and the big ones of the good news stories is where there have been um, 
on-road incidents and the drivers can be exonerated very, very quickly. Uh, we had an event quite recently where uh, one of our drivers was involved in an incident and the uh, police understood we had the cameras in there, asked for the footage, we had the camera, we went through our normal um, privacy process but the police had the footage within about 25 minutes to 30 minutes and the driver was cleared that quickly. Oh. Now that's great for the driver, there's no period of uncertainty. Absolutely. He knows he'd done everything he could do and he was okay. So there's a lot of good news stories in the, in the uh, cameras. Wow, fantastic. All right, Greg, I'll let you move to the next stage of the presentation. Okay, the next piece is some actual camera footage. Um, so we've got the consent from the drivers for all of these and some of these are G-Force activated but some are actually driver activated as well. So what we'll do, as each one comes through, I'll just give you a little bit of a running commentary but I'll leave the video speak for itself. So I'll say a few words before and we might run through each of them twice. Good plan. Okay, so there, there's what the camera footage looks like when we see it. So the image on the left is looking inside the vehicle, the one on the right is looking down the road. So that's fairly clear. In each example, I'll let you know what it look, where to look because um, what you find is you get distracted, you will look at one screen or the other. So I'll give you a bit of a heads up. On this one, we had a driver who was uh, looking to get something out of the fridge and this has occurred on the Bruce Highway north of Brisbane, it's a G-Force activated. Essentially he's taken his eyes off the uh, road for only a couple of seconds, that was enough for him to lose, the, uh, lose control. So if you look mainly to the left of the screen, you'll see what's happening with the driver. Near the end of the video, if you look to the right, you'll see an oncoming vehicle and um, you can only imagine how uh, frightening it would have been for that person. <coughs> That's a, um, essentially a roll, classified as a rollover for us. The vehicle didn't go over on its side, but certainly was over on an angle. It's off-road. That uh, pretty much destroyed the, um, the prime mover and the trailers. Fortunately, the driver was fine. He had his seatbelt on, which you can see. Our seatbelts are actually high-visibility seatbelts, so you can see that that's on, plus the arms were down on the, um, the driver's seat. So the good news is there were no injuries out of all of that. Um, the bad news is it was very, very expensive. So, with this, uh, would you like to look at that again? Yeah, absolutely, let's do that. And look, I, I have seen these before, but I tell you what, they scare me every time. So, oh. They are an incredibly um, effective training tool, and it's so personal for our drivers because it's our drivers who are in there, and um, that's understandable. in my seat every time. This one here, this, this shows how quickly things happen and why it's so critical that drivers are fresh and um, focused, not distracted at all. This is again on the Bruce Highway. The camera was activated by uh, our driver swerving. We did share this with the um, Department of Transport and Main Roads to assist with their understanding but also um, just as a bit of further information for them. Um, the driver coming towards us really don't know what has what has happened or what was going inside that truck. We can only assume, but um, fortunately our driver was um, well aware and able to um, react. So if you look mainly at the right screen. So our driver, there's not a lot happening, but if you look at the right screen, you'll see what's happening. All right, let's take. A look. through once more. If you look at the right screen again, but if you look at the bottom right hand corner, you'll notice the speed is there. Now because it's GPS speed, it's a little bit slower than the real world. So our driver has um, fortunately seen what's coming, moved off to the left and actually uh, braked quite, um, quite sharply to keep out of the way. But this is a frightening event. <coughs> That's how quickly it happens. Oh gosh. That oh, whole gosh. thing was 12 seconds of footage only and I guess the event itself is probably three or four seconds of that. That's how quickly it happens. Uh, 
Okay, we'll move to the next one. This one uh, is a motorist and he's clearly in a hurry. This is between two of our trucks uh, on the Bruce Highway again, driver activated. Um, again, our drivers both are um, focused on what's going on and both of them actually brake and move to the side to allow this to let the driver get through. So I'll let this one go. So keep an eye on the right screen again. <laughs> Do you know what amazes me about that? That driver's face doesn't even change. It's like he's he's seen this before. He's he's used to other drivers on, and road users making these kinds of silly decisions. And that's a big part of why the drivers the drivers um, have accepted the cameras so well is they are seeing this every day. If there's anybody out there who has a fleet of vehicles on the road doesn't think this is happening to their people, then honestly, they're just mistaken. Our drivers are very cool and very calm, and this is what they're seeing on a regular basis. We might just run that one quickly again. And what you'll notice is both of our trucks have to move over, and the one that we're watching the camera actually slows down the market again. Okay. 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 And so our driver Oof. just puts it back on the road and just continues on. Business as usual. Yeah. Wow. Uh, it wouldn't be too extreme to suggest that's a near-death moment. Oh, gosh. Mm. And unfortunately, it is just uh, business as usual. This one is on the Flinders Highway, so west of Townsville. So there's one of our road trains um, heading out west. This is, again, a, uh, activated by the driver. And... Um, our driver has reduced speed, moved to the left, but uh, look mainly again at the right-hand screen. All right, let's take a look. Okay, I'm going to be the one of the shout outs for the destination. Down parts of the BMW and land with a man. Well done, you're done. All guys, move along. All guys. So you can see our driver reach up and activate the camera. Um, now he's seen that car fortunately coming in his mirrors. So he's not just aware of what's in front of him, he's actually doing the right thing. He's keeping an eye on his trailer set, looking behind him. He's seen that coming behind him and you can see the, the truck coming towards him. The other road train flashes lights, so he's actually seeing what's going on also. So I just want to run that one through again. Absolutely. <coughs> And I'm sure that's not lost on us that that was across double lines. Oh. It really illustrates just how professional um, there's so much more going on than just what a lot of people think these guys are just driving the truck. Absolutely. There's, there's so, so much more to it. Yeah. Well, that fellow there with the road train set, so he'll be keeping an eye on the um, trailers with the mirrors just to, just, just to keep an eye on everything that's going on. And that's what they need to do. They cannot be distracted because... Again, you can see through this, these, uh, this, this piece as a footage that it's just a couple of seconds. That's how quickly you cannot be distracted when you're uh, driving these vehicles. This one here is uh, in Mackay, so it's uh, in town, and um, a car has just pulled up in one of our trucks and done, done a U-turn. We um, have no idea what he was thinking. Once the um, crash had happened, the car stopped but then just took off. Um, we actually gave the police this footage and um, they're, they're trying to see what they can do from that. Yeah. Was the driver hurt? What was he thinking? Uh, no, it hit the very back corner of the car, so there wasn't a lot of damage to the car. There was a small mark on, on, on our truck. But the really good thing there is, so our, dri our driver comes back in, reports to his supervisor and says, listen, I've just had a crash. I don't know what's going on. The car's continued on, but there's the mark on the truck. So there's no uncertainty. It's yeah. no, not a matter of, yeah, really, what did you do? We actually know exactly what the driver has done. We know what's going on, and our driver has done everything he can do. It's a 50 kilometre zone, he's travelling at 50 kilometres, he's hit the brakes, there's nothing he could have done differently to what he did. Let's have a look at that one again. <laughs> Gosh, I've done some silly things in my time, Greg, but doing a U-turn in front of a truck is uh, not one of them. <laughs> difficult, difficult to imagine he couldn't have seen it coming. They are bright green, 
and they really do stand out. They certainly do. Oh gosh. Um, okay, so some of our learnings and insights. Um, definitely our incident rate has decreased. Uh, the number of on-road incidents that our uh, vehicles have is uh, falling and that, that's been a very, very positive uh, result from this. Um, if we do have an incident, the um, it takes we, we understand what's gone on very, very quickly. So it takes it makes the investigation so much easier and it provides certainty to what to uh, what the root cause is. Um, there's a group initiative where we're working in partnership with the Monash University to formally research driver behaviours with a view to working with equipment supplies to optimise cabin layouts. And that's all around what we've found about um, distractions. What we don't want is drivers having to look around cabs to find a radio, to find a um, station on the radio or to change a um, CD. We, we want to make sure that everything is in the driver's line of sight and easy to get to. Steering wheel controls, absolutely critical. Drink holders need to be in front of the driver so he doesn't have to reach into a refrigerator. He can actually, before he starts off, get his drink out of his refrigerator, put that in his drink holder, and then he's got that for his next driving spell. So we're doing a lot of work on that. Um, the sort of improvements we've seen, it's an industry issue where drivers don't like wearing seatbelts. There's a comfort um, perception yeah, that's out there. Um, with what we see, we're able to talk to our drivers about um, wearing the seatbelts, following too close, cornering too fast, using handheld devices. It's not just motorists, it's a community issue where uh, people don't seem to be able to leave their phones alone um, and eating and drinking while driving. So we're seeing all of those things and we're able to just talk with our drivers and just counsel them and try and find better ways to do what we need them to do and explain to them. It's all about making sure that they're not distracted so that they can actually respond to what's happening in their immediate environment. And seeing the footage, is that what really helps in changing the attitude? Yes, it does. Absolutely. And then seeing the footage of their own workmates. If this is just stock footage from somewhere else, it's a bit like the ads on television. They can have an impact, but it's not personal. But this is quite personal because our drivers know who it was that was involved, and they can talk to it and say, listen, I saw that footage. What actually happened there? And so it's much more personal, and we find that makes a real difference. Absolutely. Uh, sharing, our, sharing our learning to the team, what we um, do is we've got a uh, fairly broad um, spread of drivers located all, all across the country, so it's not always easy to get to them. So what we do is we have a, um, an update program where we just send these sorts of very quick but brief notes out, um, just letting them know, listen, this is what we're seeing. Well, we're just sharing some of our learnings with them. This one here was the Christmas one, just basically saying it's Christmas coming. You know, make sure whether you're working or whether you're um, just taking your family somewhere, make sure you're playing your route. Make sure that you've got rest breaks in there and um, be aware that there's a lot more traffic on the road and a lot more incidents can happen. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> I was asked to provide a couple of tips, um, what we would see from what we from from the information that we've got, um, as some, just some tips for general motorists. Our top tips would be, only, and, and these are supported by the videos I think we've just seen, only overtake when you are absolutely positive that it's safe to do so. Following this tip will save lives. I think it's much better, I think we would all agree, we'd rather get there five, minutes, five or ten minutes late than not at all. Absolutely. Tip two, the truck driver will often deliberately try and maintain some space between the truck and the vehicle in front. He needs that little bit of extra space just for the slowing down and just to try and keep the flow of traffic moving. So just be mindful of that before cutting in and forcing him to emergency brake. And tip three, hold back from heavy vehicles while they're turning. They do need space. That's an interesting one. It's been around for an awful lot of years and I think it's, um, it's, it's even on the licence testing now these days, I believe. And still we have a number of issues where people try and sneak up the inside. So that would be my top tips. Well, many trucks do actually have that signage on the back of them. So, they should all have it. Uh, it's very clear. <laughs> why people ignore the message, I don't know. Um, all right. And uh, it looks like we might take a few more questions. Is Absolutely. that okay, Greg? That'd be great. Fantastic. All right. <laughs> we'll start with one from uh, Anthony from Arb is asking, is Toll saving historical data for the purpose of identifying high-risk locations, trends, and common uh, driver behaviours in order to make their further improvements in safety? Yeah, we collate the information that we get and we do look for um, any particular um, areas of road that we can pass on to the Department of Main Roads uh, or, or whichever state that that's in. 
Um, so we do collate the information, we do look for trends, um, whether they be um, trends between vehicles, whether they be trends um, uh, of, of locations or even drivers, so yes. Um, what percentage of incidences is the fault of the other sort of vehicles, would you say? Oh, Jerome, it's hard to put a firm figure to, um, but in almost every occasion we find that our drivers have done the right thing. So it's, it's a very small amount where our drivers have actually done something wrong. It's pleasing. Tom from the US Federal Highway Administration is asking, has there been benefits realised with the insurance rates? So liability appears um, quite easy to determine in these cases shared. Yeah, not, not for us as toll um, because of the way I guess that we would insure, but I am familiar with um, a contractor who has had uh, a better insurance rate provided to him by his insurer and where we got these cameras from, they were being used in New Zealand um, quite successfully and in New Zealand the insurers picked up the cameras and started requesting that their uh, customers fitted them. So. Not for us necessarily, but yes, anecdotally I can say that that's my understanding. Uh, Brenton of the Demorage uh, Pro Limited would like to know, what is the cost for these camera units per vehicle? John, I don't have that on me, but it is actually on the NRS um, PP website. I think it's around about $1,000 um, per camera and about a $90 per month fee. Uh, which might sound like a lot, but it's not in the context of the value of the vehicle and the value of and the cost of an incident relating to the vehicle. Um, but that's actually on the website more specifically. Absolutely. Look, I think it's a, a small price to pay, if anything, for, for the gain. And um, we will have some contact details up uh, in a few slides' time. So if anyone does want to um, ask more questions regarding that, they can possibly follow up. Would you? Absolutely. That would be fine. Great. Uh, one more question here. Uh, David's asking, does the introduction of cameras mean that toll has a recruitment selection bias and therefore hires better drivers? I'd like to think so. I'd really like to think so. But <laughs> no, I don't think the cameras do that for us so much. We certainly make it clear before um, anybody joins us that um, about our speed limiting and our speed monitoring and our cameras um, that we run. So. If drivers have any issues, there's, there's a real opportunity for them then to decide whether they want to join us or not. Um, so no, I wouldn't suggest we've got any better recruitment process due to the cameras, but I think we end up with a better driver. And what I base that on is when we get drivers come to us, they almost all start out having um, speed incidents. And by working with them and providing them the information, we find that they drop off um, our speed reports very quickly. Typically, it's a two to three month process. So I would suggest we end up with a better driver. We don't necessarily start with a better driver. Fantastic. Uh, we have some uh, contact details up on the screen there if you have any further questions that come to mind or, or the toll group uh, website is there also for further information. Greg, thank you so much for your time in joining us here in the webinar, uh, webinar studio today and um, what, a, what an amazing story, quite the inspiration you are to uh, all young professionals starting out in the industry. So thank you for sharing your story and that of Toll. Okay, well thank you very much for that and um, I appreciate the kind words.